science says that the Atacama Desert is the driest place in the world. The desert plateau is about 10,000 feet above sea level. The days run extremely hot, and the nights get extremely cold. It turns out that this hellscape is the perfect place to build a telescope. Between the high altitude and the lack of moisture in the air, the view of the stars is practically unobstructed. I'm heading for the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, AKA ALMA, the largest astronomical project in the world. So we're just 500 meters now from the top of the site. I do feel a little bit lightheaded already. Alma's telescopes sit at nearly 17,000 feet, the same elevation as Everest Base Camp. So it's cold, windy, and difficult to breathe. There are dozens of telescopes, and it cost $1.4 billion to build them all here in the middle of nowhere, with the United States, Japan, and Europe footing most of the bill. And for that kind of money, they didn't just get a garden variety optical telescope. They got something special. I tracked down Alma's kindly head mechanic, Fabiola, to get a better understanding of how this place works. When you're in Santiago and you go out to dinner with somebody, how do you explain to them how the telescope works? Um, okay, with an optic telescope, you look on the sky, and that's what you see. Yeah. With Alma, whatever you don't see with your eyes, whatever is black, that is a lot you see with Alma. Alma sees in what's known as the millimeter range of the electromagnetic spectrum, far beyond the visible range seen by optical telescopes and the human eye. Armed with this superhuman vision, Alma can unveil all kinds of magical stuff in the universe that would have been invisible before. To get an idea of what wonders Alma is finding in space, I went to the control center where I met this very tall man. At one time, when I was in graduate school, I was supposedly the tallest astronomer who had ever lived. <laughs> the younger generation, though, is taller, so I'm not sure that's still true. Richard Simon and his fellow astronomers are using ALMA to look for the origins of stars, life, and the universe itself. With ALMA, they're able to see the cosmos in more detail than ever before. When I was looking at the work that you guys do, you could spot even a sugar molecule near a star that's somewhere off in the Milky Way. We can detect all kinds of different molecules. Think of Alma as a huge chemical sniffer. So we can start to understand how stars form, how planets form. How did we wind up with water to support life? The surreal images Alma creates have revealed Earth-like exoplanets, a comet nursery, and galaxies at the edge of the known universe. In the not-so-distant future, they could also help answer the question of whether we're not alone. One of the small moons of Saturn, Enceladus, has geysers of water vapor and other materials coming out. And it's possible with Alma to actually look at that and try to see some of the chemistry that's going on. What is inside that moon? What is blasting out into space? Are there complicated organic molecules? I suspect that we will learn a lot more about the chemistry of life and the possibilities for life in very strange places, even here in our own solar system. Keep watching the skies, you beautiful nerds.